it's Rika Kovacin here and today we're doing a journal page but first let's see that everything is fine technique wise so you can see and hear me that's that's the first step so if everything is okay just give me a thumbs up or comment or something and if, if not, then there's hopefully still time to adjust. This is always the worst part, waiting for the delay to, to go away and somebody to actually react because it takes time. But I'll, I'll just continue babbling in the meanwhile. Uh, well. This is the page I'm recreating today. I'm using different acrylic paints to create create it and naturally some other elements too, but my main main point is the acrylic paints this time. I'm also playing with the oil pastels and a little bit using a watercolor pencil as well, but main main kind of point is the acrylic paints. So if you can see and hear me, please just give me a thumbs up or a comment that everything is good. So then, then we can continue or start. There's still about five minutes until the actual time. So, so it's, it's, well, I can still adjust. Hopefully the camera won't adjust like it just did. I'm not sure if, if everything is hap okay, because I can't get any comments. Hopefully everything is fine. Maybe I should check from my computer <laughs> that that is everything fine. Because I can't see any comments at the moment. And usually they just jump there maybe I'm, I'm not totally sure if if everything is correct let me just grab my computer and check from from there if there's any com comments just a second Something is up, I don't see any comments, but I just read that everything is fine, so we're good to go. So unfortunately, if you send me any comments or questions, there's something now happening with my phone, because normally I can see the comments as it goes, and now can, I can only comment myself, which is a bit stupid. But anyway, I'll go through the comments after the show, so... And Nathalie is here to help, so if you have any questions, she can answer them as well. So let's get started. And sorry about not being able to answer. I'm not sure what's what's the issue now. So, once again, this is something I'm recreating this time. A relatively flat page for for my kind of thing. But there's two different acrylic paints used, the oil pastels, and a bit of collaging. So let's let's get started. And where did I put there? I broke out a totally new journal just for this. As I then use some 3D gel to create that layer of texture. So, and I also have one, one of those kind of halfway through down the same page, as then I don't have to wait for the page to dry. So what you what just saw was a Moon Child journaling card pad where I took some of the pages away four of them and I'm using these to create the background layer. It could be 
anything. It could be a bigger piece. But I found this collection kind of inspiration for, for this project and for the colors I'm using. They are kind of a color scheme that I'm naturally drawn to as well. Combining pink and magenta with a little bit of brown or yellow, kind of mixing it all in. But as you can see, you can't really see that much of the actual cards in the, in the finished page. But there's some. They are peeking through the layers. And I'm also using some fussy cut elements to decorate the angel or the guardian. So, this is just double-sided tape. Naturally, you could use like the soft body gels also for this stage. I find it easier, let's put that one first, easier to go with double-sided tape for this layer as the gel is so wet or it has the moisture so there's a longer drying time for that so just going with dry adhesive like double-sided tape it's it's easier and as you can see I just went through the uh, let me know yeah now it's aligned through the edges but if you have a thick tape like those Frank or Dia ones memory hardware ones it's even better because then the adhesive is all round I'm trying to get the pattern kind of repeating all the way through. So that's why I went from edge to edge, kind of masking these lines. So there's not a straight line here going all the way through or here, but it's more like a puzzle. And that way I can kind of erase the edges. As you can see in the finished piece, there's one edge a bit showing still, but every else is kind of masked underneath everything so that's a one way to do it then you'd know the saying that every project has an ugly face so this one is definitely going to have one it's going to look really let's say interesting before we get to the color layers what I'm now using is just masking tape or the decorative tape, I think they are called in the Prima collection. Some of these are from the Art Daily line or from other previous Prima collection, but any kind of washi tape styled decorative tape will do. It only preferably, sorry, I can't speak. Uh, with a kind of sleek coating because that's a good thing for for the patterning let's say I'm doing on top if you don't have patterned tape you only have like uh, painters tape you can try that one also and that just add a layer of the soft gloss gel on top kind of turning that into um, sleek surface so like i said ugly face <laughs> we're getting the here but it's definitely not looking anything like this at the moment like i said i'm working with two different acrylic paints the liquid versions and the impasto versions and I'm creating a resist pattern for the liquid versions using 3d gel and a flower floral net stencil from Finnebeau as the liquid acrylic paints are acrylic paints so if you don't work 
let's say fast enough then it's not going to work because as you know acrylic paint it's kind of it doesn't get absorbed to the surface as much as it's kind of sticking to it so it's a really um, sticky paint and you can use acrylic paints to cover surfaces that for example watercolor wouldn't wouldn't work so they go well to glass and metal as they are so sticky and there's a variety of different kind of finishes to acrylic paints so I'm just using 3d gloss gel and a silicone brush going over the stencil and creating a dimensional pattern this is also acrylic paste so it's kind of like clear acrylic paint now I'll put a little bit too much there so let's erase it like so I'm only going for the pattern around my what is going to be the costume of the guardian and not adding anything on top of the tape because there's going to be another pattern as I said about acrylic paint and this is acrylic paste so this is really sticky so if you don't clean your stencil right away it will stay on top of the stencil so I have a bucket of water underneath my table and I'm just popping this one in if you can clean the stencil right away it's always better not letting anything stick to it but as now I'm not going to waste your time by cleaning the stencil then the water bucket, bucket is kind of a easy solution this one dries clear as you probably know it's white when it's wet and dries clear so this one is the version I'm now and here it is all dried I usually let this air dry rather than use the heat tool because of the boiling effect acrylic paints are water based so there's water in it and if you use the heat tool to to dry them it will boil it probably will create a lovely kind of texture but to me I'm now wanting a sleek surface so that's why I prepare this beforehand so we have a dry surface if you're in a hurry you can naturally use a heat tool but be careful not to boil it let's do the robe first for that I'm using impasto paints and as acrylic paints are really like fast in drying luckily it's been a bit rainy today so hopefully hopefully everything will work fine I get all my supplies ready so there's the impasto paints there's the stencil and I also have a baby wipe already kind of ready to go these are almost dry so let me just add a little bit of moisture to it here we go this is just water so I have all my elements already for this technique oh, not that one this is kind of going the other way around as in the background I'm using just my fingers because the impasto paints are really thick and re creamy so you can kind of use them as finger paints and create lovely surfaces of color it's all, all like giving a totally different feel to the paint using your fingers than using a brush but if you don't want your hands to get dirty naturally you can use a brush as well I'm just sticking my fingers to every kind of medium first and thinking later and that's kind of not the <laughs> great way to do it for example the fabric hardening stuff from Finnabar collection that doesn't come off really easily so there's the layer then I'm putting my stencil on top trying to keep it steady and then I take my wet baby wipe 
and going over in the area where the paint is. So as it's water-based, water removes it. And this is wet baby wipe. So I, I'm trying to remove the paint and just leaving the pattern. Again, this one goes to, to the water bu bucket underneath. And here you can see, hopefully, yeah, there we go. You can see the back pattern. It's kind of reversed. You can create somewhat similar pattern by brayering some acrylic paint to the stencil and then pressing it. But then it has to be a really absorbing surface. And this way you're kind of creating the negative way of the pattern. But as I said, it's acrylic paints are really fast drying, so you need to kind of move speedily. It can be a little bit dry when you start removing the paint, but not too dry. It's kind of like, well, not leathery, but still, it can dry a little bit. But this was really moist paint, and I was still able to get that pattern. Impasto paints are really highly pigmented, really thick paints. The name impasto comes from the technique where you, where you layer the acrylic paints really thickly, resembling an oil paint. Acrylic paints are kind of the youngest of the bunch in a way, because they were created during the 50s, if I remember correctly. So they are not an old medium, but they are after that created so that you get a varying effect using them. So there's the liquid versions, which are more like watercolor-like, but as they are acrylic paints, they are water resistant after drying. So they are kind of permanent, so you can create layers with them more easily than using watercolors because the layers underneath won't react with the, anything coming on top. And these kind of impasto styled paints, they are kind of heavy body, so they are really good for textured surfaces and, and get, getting that oil paint look. As you can still see, there's a long way to go from here to here. Let's start with the background. So let me move these over. You can use also impasto paints for this background technique, but then as they are so, so like heavy, pigmented, opaque, you need to kind of make them up more fluid. If you only have impasto paints, try mixing them with soft gloss gel, for example. Because if you just dilute acrylic paints with water, they are okay if you're using just paper. But if you use any kind of harder surface, where like a non-absorbing surface, like metal or glass, then what you're diluting is also the binding agent, the kind of plastic thing there is, a polymer, I think it's called. And then they don't stick to the surface that well anymore. So I would recommend not using water as the main diluting agent, but instead using a gel medium. So that's a draw same kind of stuff that the base of the uh, acrylic paint is, but it's just transparent. As you can see, I'm using some of the paint kind of just drops on top and then going over with a wet brush, kind of giving it a watercolor kind of look. But after drying, it's permanent, so if I want to do something on top, then it won't react. Whereas if I would use watercolor, then it would start reactive 
any moisture comes on top. Let me just. And as there's no gesso underneath, the paper is kind of absorbing the color, whereas I'm able to wipe it clean from the gentle medium. Now it's a bit too pale. Let's add a little bit more. In case you, by the way, want to know the colors I'm using, I'm thinking probably Nathalie is get, saying them anyway, but this one is burnt sienna, this one is magenta, and this one is purple. They are the ones I'm using for the background. And for the dress, I was using, where did I put them there? Heather and raspberry pink. Kind of inspired by the Moonchild collection. That's the one we have here underneath. So in everywhere that there's the transparent layer, it's kind of then giving the pattern that's underneath. So if you would use a book page, for example, then the letters would be showing where there's the the pattern done with the stencil. Let me draw this a little bit just to get it a bit more vibrant before removing the paint. Sitten katsoa sun tosi noin kommentteja, niin pikaisesti, että onko siellä jotain niin kuin, hirveästi kysytty. Like so. Now it's a little bit dry, so I don't remove everything. Just kind of slightly going over some spots. If you don't want to do this stage at all, it's fine. As you can see, the diluted version of the paint is kind of going, sunking into the grooves anyway and revealing the pattern. Here we go. And again, a little bit <laughs> far from here still, but we're getting there. Next we're going to be using watercolor pencils and the oil pastels. Let's start with, I'm just using a black one from the set, so it can be any set. Prima has several watercolor pencil sets, anything that just has the black one. And I'm going, and it doesn't have to be the black one. Naturally, you can use purple, or if you're using totally different color schemes, you can use kind of contrasting color or something that goes well well with the colors you're using whatever is your taste i'm just using it to highlight the form so it's as it's watercolor pencil i'm then taking a wet brush and going over kind of a little bit mm, how do I say? Merging it to the background. Like so. Then I'm needing a couple of elements from the, the, the moon child pad. Just fussy cutting this moon from one of the cards. And I already cut this one, and no, it's going to be her, his color. And this one is going here, and then we have the head. Oh, by the way, now I need my husband's help, because I'm going to ask you something, and he's going to give me your answer. 
So do you want me to show how these are created? These are hot glue to the peanut butter molds. I'm, I've done it a dozen, dozen times already, so I guess it might be boring, but if there is somebody who hasn't seen it yet, then just say that make one and I'll, I, I'm going to do it. So he's going to give me the answer, youth. You are then saying, and I'm continuing. I had a pattern here, somewhere over the rainbow. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. I made a little pattern for the sleeves. And then I made some cardstock for that. So if, if you want me to show how I created the, the little moon head using the stars mold, stars and moons mold, then I'm going to do it. But if you're all familiar with it, it's no point of doing it again. So there's one sleeve, and then the other. And this time I'm hoping that, uh, as you can see, I remembered to flip it. So I'm getting two different sleeves with the same pattern and not the same ones. Ta-da! And to keep it kind of in the same style as the dress, I'm going over with the watercolor pencil to kind of highlight the edge. I'm not sure if I can say highlighting because it's black. So what was the word it? Yes, no. Oh, there was no, no comment on I should or shouldn't, so I'm not doing it. If now somebody then wants, I'm going to link to a previous video where I'm doing the embellishments. But it's really as simple as it sounds. You just take a hot glue gun and pipe the glue into the mold, the silicone mold, as it handles the heat. And then you let the shape cool before popping it out. So it's really oh yeah light the one does this help with the light it's actually light outside but i guess it doesn't translate to the camera that well so then we have the sleeves let's add some black more here Depending if you want it more kind of charcoal looking or more sketchy, you don't have to use the water or then just blend it with water. And then this one here, these, then we need the wings. These are just done using a finabar stamp of a dragonfly stamped over a transparency and I didn't even ink the whole body because I'm just using the wings so it's just to get them them printed out if you want naturally you can use paper too but I wanted something a bit more delicate than, than just paper, so I used transparency instead. I'm just cutting them out. Here we go. These are going to be here. Hmm, the same thing as last time background is so dark or full of color that I need a little bit of contrast 
even though I didn't want to use paper, then the trick is as acrylic paints stick to the sleek transparency. I'm able to use that one as my advantage and add a little bit white to the back. This is white gesso, but the gesso in Finnebar line is acrylic based. So this then gives me a little bit of the contrast I want. And I'm only applying it to the kind of near where the dragonfly's body would be. More of a heavy layer and then kind of dry brushing it to the tip so then that kind of fades to the background. And then where's the color? Here we go. That one goes first, then even this one, then the sleeves. And then we have the head, we have the halo. So we need to color the head and make the little heart. But let me glue these down first and then, then do the finishing touches. If you have any questions about the acrylic paints, I'll, I'll get to them after I'm done. Where's my glue? There. Let's start with the wings as they are kind of in the back, the bottom layer. I'm not adhering them totally, just adding a little dot, let's say, there. So they are a bit loose in the ends. Then the sleeves. This is kind of a really basic shape of a human styled figure. It's not, not really, really detailed. But you get the idea that it's a person or being anyway. And then the moon part. There we go. And then let's bring in the oil pastels. I'm using them to bring a little bit of color to the sleeves. Naturally, you could use the liquid hmm, acrylic paint as well. But these are water soluble versions, so I'm able to add just a little bit of the purple, kind of adding my own hand touch to the sleeves, blending them more to the costume that's there. A little bit of that one as well. Here we go. Then I'm using the water soluble effect also to stamp. So let's see, maybe, oops, come on, stick there. Maybe a yellow and red. I'm just rubbing them straight through the stamp, then adding a little bit of water, kind of making those crayons react and then jump, just stamping it. The amount of water effects to the look, for example, this one is, a, come on, Please focus. A little bit more watercolor like than the one I had in my original version. A quick dry. And then let's cut it. And 
use again the watercolor pencil to go around the edges kind of repeating the same thing that's already there keeping the project coherent that way and then I'm going over the line with a wet brush kind of getting the same effect that's already in the project as you can see here is a strong kind of halo, halo looking so there's yellow on top of all the layers and a little bit of dark in the background sorry about didn't focus better those ones I did using the oil pastels without diluting them so I'm just scribbling with the oil pastel as it's so creamy it will stay on top of the acrylic paints there we go but is this one isn't then permanent so if water should then spill to the page acrylic paints would handle it well naturally the paper wouldn't it would start to buckle and go into a pulp but this layer would get ruined as well if you're doing something like um, for a gallery wall then you might want to add a coat of fixative for example to safeguard them or use such oil pastels that aren't soluble with water but you are also able, because they are water soluble, to kind of smudge them without any th thinners or, well, any kind of <laughs> not watery things, solvents. That's the word I was looking for. Then let's mount that one already. With the foam dots. Then we need just a couple of more things. This is kind of she, he is holding a heart where the wish is then going to be. And I was thinking for this one, these are from the Art Daily line, the stickers. I'm thinking that this one is guardian of a voice because it's important to have your voice heard and then where is it here you could use gel medium to adhere these metal embellishments but I'm using just a regular craft glue this time Just going over. If I would do a heavy embellishing, like a really dimensional project, then naturally I would take there's the twelve. Take the gel medium because that one is really sturdy. But in a journal page, craft glue is good. Just pressing it down for a little while so it will stick and then adding a little bit of the same color of the yellow kind of the halo glow using the oil pastel it's so creamy so it will again stick even to the metal surface and we are not looking for a whole lot of color just kind of a hint bringing the background and foreground then this one I already painted white with white gesso and this is how come on how it comes out of the mold so you can't really see the face that well because it's, it's just this opal kind of milky looking but this one is the actual same face 
just paint it with white gesso. And that's done with the Finnebar mold uh, stars and moons. So we need a little bit of kind of whoops, no I didn't go it didn't go where I wanted. A little bit of kind of shadow, let's say contrast to the eyes. So I put a little bit of the watercolor pencil to my craft mat and then picked up the color using a wet brush. Kind of trying to get those eyes more highlighted. So there's a little bit more contrast. And then I just took the same yellow oil pastel and gave her him kind of round little cheeks. And then it's just adhering it in place. If you would use the gel medium for this, then just apply a lot of it. But if you're using a craft glue or something, something like that, then as this one is dimensional, it's handy to have something to the other side, kind of balancing it. So it's not, not just this place that's adhered, but easier that there's a whole layer. layer. And there we go. This one is the Guardian of Voice. And here's the original. The Guardian of Hope. Just a little bit darker around the eyes, which I can then adjust. And two different acrylic paints in the background. A little bit of water soluble things like the pastels and watercolor pencils. And it's really, really, really easy. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to see your comments. So I'm now going to have a look if there's any questions. Thank you so much for attending this show. Thank you, Natalie, for helping. And, well, I guess <laughs> that that's it. If you have any questions, then just type them in and I'll, I'll go and answer them now. So thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.